Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mathlog. This is lesson module uh, 1.1 and it's identifying integers and their opposites. So you must live in California, that's why you are um, going to this lesson and all your lessons can be found at MrMathlog.com. Let's go to that real quick you guys. The reason why I said you're in California is there's a couple of sixth grade classes that I'm teaching. One is uh, uh, for uh, New York and and Florida. That's this sixth grade. This sixth grade math is for California. This C. So make sure you pick this one here. I actually teach high school, so you see a bunch of high school classes over here. But for my sister and her colleagues, I taught third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade also. But this is sixth grade California, so just make sure you click you pick that link right there, and you're going to see it's going to be uploaded right there. So when you click click that uh, you'll see this lesson up here so let's go to fifth grade so it'll look like this as the year gets going on with a bunch of lessons your whole textbook will be going on there just make sure you click the California link all right let's go ahead and get started here so our question is how do we identify an integer and its opposite so here we go so positive and negative numbers positive numbers are numbers that are greater than zero Positive numbers can be written with or without a plus sign. So, for example, 3 is the same as plus 3, okay? But negative numbers, they're less than 0. Negative numbers must always be written with a negative sign. So, here's a number line right here. So here's the negative number. So here's 0. The number 0 is neither positive nor negative right here. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. This arrow means it keeps going. So negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, forever and ever and ever to negative infinity. Over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so the farther you are on the right, the bigger the number is. So negatives kind of look like they work backwards. Negative 5 is actually less than negative 4 because it's to the left. So the, the further you go to the left, the smaller the numbers get right there. Okay, so here we go. We've got a table that shows the elevations of several locations in a state park, and we're going to graph these on the number line, okay? All right, and so the elevations of locations describes uh, its height above sea level, and then when you're at sea level, when you're down at the ocean, the elevation is zero. So elevations below sea level are represented with negative numbers, and if you're above sea level, then they're represented with positive numbers. Most people live in areas above sea level. Okay, so for example, I live in an area that's uh, the elevation is like 57 feet. That just means it's 57 feet above uh, the elevation of the sea. Okay, sea level being zero. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to plug in uh, five. So we'll put a point on five and we'll call it point A. So I'll plot a point right here and it'll be point A for Little Butte. Okay, so negative five is Cradle Creek. That's over here. So negative five is over there. All right, and then Dinosaur Valley is point C. That's at negative nine. So that's way over here is Dinosaur Valley. So there's C, there's D, and there's Juniper Trails point E. Let's answer some questions now. So which point on the, now this little symbol means number. The, which point on the number line represents sea level? Remember, sea level is at zero right there. So that one's zero. And which point is closest to sea level, and how come? Well, which one is closest to sea level? Point E is. So point E is Juniper Trails right there, okay? So Juniper Trails, because its elevation is the closest to sea level. All right, so which two locations are the same distance from sea level, and are these above or below sea level? All right, so uh, here's zero right here. Let's see, is there any point that's the same as E, which is negative 3? No. How about uh, this point B, negative 5? Yeah, so A and B are opposites. They're 5 and negative 5, so they are the, uh, they are the same distance from sea level. So uh, Little Butte is above sea level, and Cradle Creek is below sea level. Okay, which location has the lowest elevation? This one has the lowest elevation. It's the smallest. It's the furthest to the left on the number line. So Dinosaur Valley, because its elevation is the farthest on the left on our number line right there. All right, so... Uh, a couple of questions. Morning Glory Stream is seven feet below sea level. What number represents this elevation of this site? Well, that would be below would be negative, so negative seven. Explain how to graph the elevation of this site on the number line. Well, that would just be uh, graph seven points to the left of zero on the number line. That's all they're asking right there. All right, so uh, two numbers are opposites if one number if on a number line they are the same distance from zero but on different sides. So, for example negative 5 and 5 are opposite numbers of each other because because they're the same distance away so here's negative 5 is 5 units away 
positive 5 is also 5 units away from 0 on a number line. So if they're the same, then they're opposites of each other. Whole numbers start with 0, and they're just counting numbers after that. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up, just keep counting. They're just counting numbers, including 0. Integers are all the whole numbers and all their opposites. So integers are all the negative numbers, including 0, and all the positive numbers. Remember, 0 is not positive or negative. So all the negative counting numbers and all the positive counting numbers, and don't forget about good old 0 in the middle right there. Those are integers, all right? So Sue kept track of the weekly low temperatures in her town for several weeks. So the table shows the low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for each week. Okay, so week one is negative one degrees uh, below zero. So the negative means it's below right there. So this is three positive three, so three degrees above zero. And then this would be negative four degrees below zero, and this would be two degrees above zero. Okay, anyway, so let's graph uh, the temperature for week three. Here's week three right here at negative four, and it's opposite on the number line. So we're going to graph negative 4 down here and positive 4 up here okay so we're always used to having number lines going like that but number lines can go up and down also just like a thermometer outside okay so this is our thermometer so negative 4 and 4 so the value for week 3 is negative 4 and represents 4 degrees below 0 because it's negative the, its opposite is 4 which represents 4 degrees above 0 Okay, so the value for week five is the opposite. Now, careful, there's a, a tricky wording here. Is the opposite of the opposite of the value of week one. What is the low temperature for week five? Okay, so for week one is negative one. We'll just go through what I said right here. The value of week one is negative one. The opposite of negative one is one. The opposite of the opposite, so the opposite of one is negative one. So so it's going to be the opposite of the opposite. So the low temperature for week five is negative one degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is uh, one degree below zero right there. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, maybe this will help. So explain how to find the opposite of the opposite of any number. Well, the opposite of the opposite of any number is just that number itself. So if I said find the opposite of the opposite of negative 13, well, it's just negative 13, okay? All right, so, okay, so graph the opposites of the number on the number line, okay? So let's graph, this is negative 1, so we'll graph positive 1. This is positive 7, so we'll graph negative 7. That's all that's asking right there, okay? So there they are, those, those pink points right there. All right, so we'll write the opposites of each number. What's the opposite of 10? Negative 10. What's the opposite of negative 5? Positive 5. The opposite of 4 is negative 4. The opposite of 0 is just 0. 0 doesn't have an opposite. It's the only number that doesn't have an opposite. All right, so what is the opposite of the opposite of negative 11? Well, that's just negative 11. Okay, all right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.